This is the first time I've ever preached not in a suit. But I feel like I need my war clothes on this morning. Come on, somebody. I'm looking for a congregation that's ready to put on some camo and some boots and make a little war this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. If you will turn with me this morning to Zechariah chapter 4, beginning at verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4, and beginning at verse 6. And the scripture says, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Today I want to talk to you briefly on the subject, the spirit of the 300. The spirit of of the 300. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your presence that we feel today. Lord, we we thank you that you choose to come and be in the praises of your people. May your anointing rest upon us today. Lord, I ask you to help me this morning. Hide me behind the cross. Help me to say and speak what only you would have me say. And help us, Lord, to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to your church in Lincoln. Not only to hear But Lord, to do, let us be doers of the word. We ask in the name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. Amen. Here in Zechariah chapter 4, we find Zerubbabel is wanting to help rebuild the temple. And the spirit of the Lord comes and says, Zerubbabel, it's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. You see, if the temple was going to be rebuilt, it wouldn't be a result of Israel's might, military might, because they had none. If the temple was going to be rebuilt, it wasn't going to be because of their political power, because they had none. But it would be a direct result or product of the spirit of the living God. Can I tell you we're in a situation today in the United States of America and across the world that political might ain't going to cut it. Political power ain't going to cut it. Our own knowledge and our own intellect is not going to cut it. But what it's going to take, it's the spirit of the Holy Ghost. The spirit of God. That's what we need. The church as a global body in 2023 needs a wake up call. For far too long we have been trying to influence today's culture and our world with our own might. We have been trying to make a change. What money can we spend to influence our community? What programs can we offer to make a difference? We've tried to influence politics and government policies by invoking the power of the megachurch and national ministry names. We have more mega churches than we ever have in the history of America. Yet we have more problems than we've ever experienced. There's a disconnect. We have more influence. The Pentecostal church has more influence today than it ever has. We've gone from the storefront to the mega church. Yet we seem to have little effect on the world. Don't get me wrong. Everything that I mentioned in itself is good. We should try to influence politics. We should try to reach out in our community with the resources that we have. But are we trying to solve a spiritual problem with natural resources? It's never going to work. You can only solve spiritual problems with spiritual solutions. See, what we've done is we've put all of our metaphorical eggs in one basket. And we've come up short every time. One reason I believe we've come up short 
is because we are so naturally minded. It's so hard for us to see in the spiritual realm. And that most of the problem, if not all that we face today, it's a spiritual battle against the kingdom of darkness. See, we look at Republicans and Democrats and we see everything in the natural. We look in, in, in the economy and we look in the world, in, in the geographical mess that's going on right now. And it's all a natural thing that we see, but it is a product of a spiritual problem. Can I tell you this morning, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of God. That's the key. Pastor Josh, the Spirit of 300, what are you talking about? Well, we find in Judges chapter 7 that there's a problem. Judges chapter 7, verse 2. It says, and the Lord said unto Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give you the Midianites into your hands, lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, my own hand has saved me. Now, therefore, proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, whoever is fearful and afraid let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the people returned and 10,000 remained. But the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water and I will test them there for you. Then it will be that whom I say to you, this one shall go with you. And the same will go with you. And whom shall I say this one will not go with you? The same shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set him apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink, and the number of those who lap put in, uh, from their hand to their mouth was 300 men. But all of the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, by the 300 men who lapped, I will save you and deliver the many nights into your hand. Let all of the people go, every man to his place. So we find that Gideon starts with 32,000 men. But there was some spirits in the camp that had to be removed. Before a great move of God comes, a purging has to take place. The church as a whole doesn't understand or doesn't want to talk about purging anymore. Back in the day, used to focus on holiness and allowing the Lord to purge and remove anything that was contrary to the character of God. We have leaderships in churches across the world who would rather have the 32,000 and ignore the purpose of God than to submit and preach purging through the Holy Ghost. Preaching holiness is not popular. It hurts the flesh. And our flesh is diametrically opposed to the Spirit of God. We have to understand that. What causes our flesh to flourish causes the Spirit of God within us to diminish. And what causes the Spirit of God to increase causes our flesh to die. Psalms chapter 51 verse 7 says, Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. See, David knew that purging was needed. Can I tell you that not only does the modern church need to be purged of what is contrary to the character of God, but we also need to be purged what is unnecessary to the kingdom. Too often times we busy ourselves with things that are not necessary to the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. Maybe they're not wrong. Just unnecessary. Listen, I don't know about you, but I want the Lord to purge me. I want him to make me more like him. Can someone say amen this morning? 
The Lord tells Gideon that a purging is needed of the 32,000. What was going to take place in the battle was going to be supernatural. And in order for the supernatural to be operational, some things need to be removed. Come on, nudge your neighbor and tell him some things need to be removed. The first thing that had to be removed from the camp was the spirit of fear. Judges chapter 7 verse 3 says, Now therefore proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the people returned, and 10,000 remained. So we see within a matter of minutes, one simple question. Gideon loses 69% of his army. 22,000 soldiers leave because of fear. How often do we remove ourselves? Or at the very least, get off track from the destiny that God has given to us simply because we fear. We fear the unknown that God is leading us toward. We fear what people may think of us. We fear the loss maybe of financial stability. Fear causes us to freeze Fear weakens. It debilitates. Just as God works through faith, the devil works through fear. Faith will cause you to take action. Fear will cause you to take cover. Faith will cause you to move. Fear will cause you to freeze. The Lord wants you to mobilize. He wants you to move throughout the battle. In faith, the devil wants you to hunker down, take cover, and hide. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 says, I have not, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Psalms chapter 27 verse 1 says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalms chapter 34 verse 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fear. Fear and faith cannot reside together. If we want to have the spirit of the 300, we must cast out the fear that lives within our life and we must reside in faith. Come on, nudge your neighbor and say reside in faith this morning. We all know this verse, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. It doesn't say it's hard to please him. It doesn't say it's difficult. It is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We have to remove fear from our camp. And replace it with faith. So we see that this one thing has lost. Gideon has lost 22,000 of his men. Leaving him with 10,000. But God was not through. In uh, chapter 7 verse 4 of Judges. It says the Lord said to Gideon. The people are still too many. Bring them down to the water and I will test them for you. Can I tell you every pastor in leadership loves that. The Lord says, bring them down. I'm going to test them for you. Can I tell you testimonies come from a test? And here, this was a test from God. It was a test from God. And then he says, and it there will be whom I shall say to you, this one shall go with you. The same shall go with you. And whomever I say to you, this one shall not go, the same shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set aside by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. All of the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. 
And the Lord said to Gideon, by these 300 men who lapped, I will save you and deliver the many nights into your hand and let all the other people go, every man to his place. So now we see Gideon goes from 10,000. His army is reduced by 97%, leaving him with 300 men. We know the Lord had to remove the spirit of fear from the camp in the 22,000. But what was wrong with these 9,700 men? Why did they have to go? I believe they were simply not prepared to face the enemy. When we're simply, when we're not prepared to face the enemy, we're of no good. By lowering their heads and drinking directly from the stream, they showed that they were not being vigilant. They were not prepared for an attack. They were not in an offensive or even a defensive posture. Listen, believers across the world need to wake up while the devil is mobilizing. Most believers have their head down in the creek. There should be a call going out from the church pulpits warning the army of God to get in a defensive and even an offensive position. But we're too busy with our head down. Our eyes are not on the horizon. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 says be sober or be self-controlled. It says be vigilant or be watchful because your adversary the devil is walking around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So this tells me that I can be full of faith and have faith that move mountains. I can be a person with no fear and I can believe God for the impossible. But I can disqualify myself from participating in the move of God if I'm not prepared. Come on, somebody. Come on, we're stomping out this morning. You can have all the faith in the world. You can believe for the impossible, but if you're not prepared in God, if you're slacking on your Bible study, if you're not praying, if you're not getting into His Word, you're not prepared. Are we disqualifying ourselves? Just as Pastor Steve says that we need to be balanced with the word and the spirit, we also need to be balanced with faith and preparation. It's not sufficient to have enough faith to totally not prepare and walk into a situation ill-equipped. We've seen it all the time. People will come into the church. They'll get on fire for God. Their faith is high. They're going to move mountains. They're going to stomp on the devil's head, but they're not prepared. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wilds or the scheming of the devil. I find it very unique here that he doesn't say, fill yourself up to the brim with faith so you can withstand the wilds of the devil. No, he says, put on the armor of God. There's an action that we have to do. There's something that we have to do to prepare. Verse 12 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. Therefore, having girded your your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication, For all the saints. There's some work to be done. There's something that we have to do. The 300 knelt down and cupped their hands 
cupped the water in their hands, they never took their eyes off the tree line. They were in a defensive posture. They had their camo on. Come on, somebody. They were ready for an attack that could have come their way. Are we ready this morning? Do we have on the full armor of God? Are we filled with faith as well as spiritually prepared for the battle? Listen, God can do more with 300 faith-filled, prepared believers than with 32,000 fear and ill-equipped people. Listen, God is God. He will always do more with less. Can you imagine what Gideon was thinking? So, so we see why the army had to, to, to decrease. But now I want to focus on Gideon a moment. I'm sure that fear tried to grip his heart. But Gideon would not allow fear to take root. Why? Because he had a word from God. He's had a visitation from God. We find in chapter 6 of Judges, beginning at verse 12, it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why has all of this happened to us? And where are his miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, did, the not, did not the Lord bring us from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said unto him, My Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. And the, and the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Listen, Gideon had a word from the Lord. He had a word from the Lord. His army went from 32,000 to 10,000, to 300. But Gideon held on to God's word in faith and assurance, knowing that God is a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. Come on, nudge the person next to you and say, he's a promise keeper. If he said it, won't he do it? With the full 32,000 soldiers, listen, the odds were already against him. History tell us, tells us that Gideon was going up against an army of 100, at least 135,000 well-trained men. At the most. And all he had was 32,000. And then he watched the Lord send away 22,000. And then 9,700, leaving him with 300 men against 135,000. Can I tell you, sometimes we enter into seasons of subtraction in our life. And I would say in most cases, we consider those times as being a time of loss. Times where people are removed from us. Things are removed from us. We are moved out of our comfort zone. We are moved out of the place where we have been. Come on, the Lord is speaking to somebody this morning. But what if things are being removed for a reason? Maybe it's people we thought were our friends. Maybe it's things being removed. Sometimes churches will go through a season of subtraction. 
And I know those times can be very hard. They're hard. But what we need to learn is not to curse our season of subtraction. What if God is trying to prepare you for things that are coming? What if he's trying to remove everything out of your life that will hinder a victory? God can do more with 300 than men with 32,000. We find Judges chapter 7, verse 16. It says, And then he divided the 300 men into three companies. And Gideon put a trumpet into every man's hand with an empty pitcher and torches inside the pitchers. Jumping down to verse 20, it says, And then the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers they that held the torches in their left hand and the trumpet in their right hand for blowing and they cried the sword of the lord and gideon and every man stood in his place all around the camp of the midians and the whole army ran and cried out and fled when the 300 blew the trumpets the lord set every man's sword against his companion throughout the whole camp and the army fled to Beth Echad towards Zerak and as far as the border of Abnau, Mahala, and Tabath. God brought victory to the 300 men. Listen, I don't care what the odds look like. I don't care what the circumstances look like. When the God of heaven and earth is on your side, listen, the odds don't matter. The odds don't matter when God is on your side. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So what was the spirit that was on the 300 men? It was the spirit of faith. And it was the spirit of power. It was the spirit of God. I pray. That the spirit of, was, that was on the 300 rests upon us today. Yes. 300 willing to go against the odds. 300 willing to listen to the voice of God. Let us be that 300. Stand with me this morning. Can I tell you this morning that God does not need you to win the battle for him. He's God all by himself. Come on, somebody. Some of you need that pressure removed off you this morning. Maybe you're facing an insurmountable opposition. and You don't know how to overcome it. God does not need you to win the battle. Listen, I know this world is in an awful state. But he does not need us to win the battle all over the earth for him. Because the battle belongs to God. All the Lord requires of us, all that he asks of us is that we be available and full of faith. That's it. We have to be available and full of faith. He just needs someone who is prepared and someone who is looking through the eyes of faith. Because it's in that atmosphere, miracles happen. It's in that atmosphere that God can move on our behalf. I want to encourage you this morning. If you're in a season of subtraction. God has his hand in it. The steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. It's time to put camo on. 
It's time to fill yourself with faith and watch the mighty hand of God at work. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by His Spirit. It's by His Spirit. The Spirit of the living God. I want you to take the hand of the person next to you and say, come on, let's go to the altar and pray for a few moments. Come on, let's spend a few moments talking with God this morning. Believing for the impossible. Believing for Him to do what He said He would do. There is power